So the last time you saw this shed, I had just finished the interior workshop. But now I got this amazing outdoor space, which all the mess is protected from the house by that one wall. But I've got an outdoor space to be able to forge and do all of the messy outdoor jobs that I want to do. So let's build it. So the main element that I want to do is create a table, a bench that I can have my forge on, and then I'll actually bring the old forging table that I built at the last house across to the other side of that space so that I've got an anvil stand and I've got my forged bench to be able to have side by side. So it's a really easy, simple forging setup. First things first, let's work out our measurements. Let's actually figure out what we're gonna build and then create a cut list. So I always like to use a scrap piece of wood just to note down all the cuts I'm actually making. Just saves from getting pieces of paper blown away. The actual build was a really simple build. I don't know what this is actually called, but I generally refer to it as a, a ladder structure table where you sort of create two sides and then join them together. And the, it's a really simple, basic structure, but it seems to be pretty strong. It's probably a little bit over-engineered, probably a little bit heavier than it ever needs to be, but it, it works. So this box frame, ladder frame table, I wanted to create a cutout at one end so that the gas bottle could fit under there without having to... Like, I really found it a struggle on the old forging table. I used to store the gas bottle under it, but it wasn't quite big enough and I had to try and work to actually get it into the space. So yeah, it just made much more sense to have a cutout. I then just used normal sort of eight mil decking, not decking, cladding to create my tabletop and to create a base underneath it as well, routed off all the edges to be able to make sure it was nice and smooth and that there was nothing to catch my arm on. Off camera from this, I actually also then painted the whole thing in just a waterproof outdoor, I think it's called duck's back paint just to make sure it wasn't going to rot the wood. And then I put a back onto the table as well so that I can actually store stuff under it without it being exposed to the weather. Then I wanted to create a little upstand because actually most of the table is relatively dull. It's, it's functional, but it's not that interesting. And I just wanted a little bit of interest on there. So I did this show sugi band technique where basically you burn a piece of wood so you can see here that you really you use the blowtorch to create this thing is called an alligator char on the top surface and then use a wire brush to be able to just clean off any of that excess char. And once you've done that, you're left with this absolutely beautiful, looks like stained wood, but it has an extra texture than the depth and it, it's protected from wet and all of those sorts of things without having to actually apply any additional varnish to it. Now we come to the actual forge itself. Now I got this forge from a guy on eBay. I will link to his eBay store down below. I have talked to him and, and said, you need a shop because this is fantastic stuff. They're, if you look on eBay for forges, you'll find lots of the Devil's Forge options, which are the ready-built forges, and I'm sure they're fine. But because they are made by a big company, having an actual contact is really difficult. Whereas this guy, it's just one guy who, who builds them in his workshop and then ships them out. And so any issues I had, any questions I had, I was able to talk to him. He really recommended, he said, I initially was just going to go with a one burner forge. And he said, look, get the forge that you think you'll need in five years time rather than the forge that you need now. So it has a switch on there, so I can use it as a one burner forge. I can also open the back door and I actually have stuff right the way through. But if I close the door down and just use one burner, it works fantastically. The one issue I had was I mounted the burners the wrong way around. I thought I'd been clever by deciding to actually have it so the gas would go over the edge of the table rather than down behind it, and then realized that it meant the one that turns off would be at the front, and that wasn't particularly helpful. And just attaching my upstand to the back of the table and this just means that I don't then have stuff rolling off and falling down into that area behind the shed. Since this video has been done I've also we've had the whole garden done and dealt with and so all of that grass area that you can see is now gravel it just means it's a much easier space to work in. 
connecting it. The instructions were fantastic in the Forge packet. It was just a question of actually joining all of the piping together, a little bit of PTFE tape, and then hooking it up and trying it for the first time suddenly realize it's a significantly stronger forge than my old paint tin forge. It's uh, quite an impressive little beast and it, it does heat up really well. Now, one thing I was fascinated by was he actually recommended not to use an extra refractory. He sent a rigidizer, a big bottle of rigidizer with it and just said spray the whole thing inside, make sure everything's completely coated, do it several times over and then leave it to dry for three or four days. He said I wouldn't need an additional refractory lining now, time will tell with that, but I take him at his word, so we'll see how things get on. So, I started filming the Forge Table video a few weeks ago, start, uh, quite a while ago actually, not long after I finished building the shed. Unfortunately, it's then been, yeah, a combination of pretty miserable weather, and then unfortunately I had a rather unfortunate incident between my bike and uh, a fire road where Despite the fact that apparently I managed to survive all the lumpy, bumpy, jumpy stuff, riding in a straight line down a flat road proved a little bit too difficult. I don't even know what I was doing. That's really annoying. Why did I fall off going in a straight line? And now it's f***ing raining. So, Paul's have just been recovering from that, but thankfully it's now mostly done. And so I can kind of give you my final thoughts on it. So the forge stand is now done. As you can see, I have made a slight change, which is I've changed the angle that it was uh, pointing at. Because previously it was actually pointing this way, which meant that all the heat came up in here. And it was, yeah, up in here was getting quite hot. Um, I'm sure it probably wouldn't have caused a fire, but it was just a little bit of a risk. So I've changed the angle so it's now pointing that way, which means it's a whole lot safer. And also, it means I tend to actually stand out here and it brings the anvil to about the right height for me, um, either to stand on the gravel or to stand up here. So actually it works really well. I'm really pleased with it. Yeah, the table as a whole has been serving multiple purposes. It's also become quite a useful welding table. Not a traditional welding table, as they are normally made out of metal, 
But just as a useful workstand, I've been learning how to do some very, very basic welding. I am not a welder, but it's been a useful additional skill. So it's been quite a useful spot to sit. And this outdoor space has been absolutely fantastic. Actually, I've been loving having the space to actually work and, and be outdoors and do the work that I need to do outdoors rather than in the shed. So yeah, it's been good. If you've got any questions about how I built the table, about the forge itself. So the forge is from a guy I met him through eBay, because uh, there are lots of, um, I think they're called Devil Forge or something like that. And, and they're industrially made and I'm sure they're fine. But this guy was sort of saying, yeah, his is made out of heavier gauge material and it, it works really well. It's it's a much better quality. It's about the same cost as those, and I've actually got a contact somebody I can talk to and say X, Y, or Z. Uh, I asked him about refractory. I asked him about various things, and yeah, he's been very quick and easy to respond to. And yeah, it's been great actually. Building it was straightforward and simple, and it works like a dream. So much better than the old paint tin forge. That was brilliant for heat treatment, and I may still use it because I, I haven't tried a heat treatment in this one yet, and I'm worried it. It may get too hot for heat treatment. I just need to control it, it's fine. But the old one, I could just kind of, I knew it would never get too hot, so it would con heat control really well. So I just need to get better at it with this one. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's going really well. So any questions, anything you wanna know, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.